Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I think the first portable media player I ever purchased was a Creative Zen jukebox. It was like a 60 gig unit. And that was, that was quite a few years ago when 60 gigs was huge for media players. And I guess to a certain degree it still is today. Um, but it uh, could hold just about every MP3 I wanted it to hold. It also played back uh, Windows Media files, um, just audio. The screen was an LCD screen, and I uh, did enjoy using that. I ended up having to go with Not Mad Jukebox, which was a, a third-party tool, I think from Red Chair Software, memory serves. Um, I did that largely because I was living inside of Windows, and I found it to offer the most options in a portable media player. Uh, then I think I graduated to a, an iRiver Clicks, which was super, super tiny, super tiny screen. In fact, I have that one around here somewhere. And uh, used that for a while. Um, found it to be everything I wanted it to be. Uh, certainly was portable. I mean, the thing was tiny, just, just tiny. Um, and then I really stopped using media players. Uh, as soon as I got uh, satellite radio in my car, um, as soon as I got an iPhone, uh, I really haven't used portable media players, well, beyond the iPhone and its iPod media playback functionality. But I know there are those of you out there who are curious about, oh, here comes the iPhone. No, I'm not going to pull it out. Jeez, this is not a video about the iPhone, believe it or not. It is, however, five steps for buying a media player. And this was submitted by James Stanway. He said, I've recently discovered your live feed and watched with great interest over the past couple of days. I don't know if you'd be interested in using this in a video or not, but I've come up with a few points to bear in mind if you're thinking about buying a multimedia player. And certainly we're very happy to see you, James, and uh, especially glad to see uh, this top five list because I know there are people out there who have just have no idea where to start when it comes to picking up a media player. This is James's story. He says, over the last few years, I've come full circle when it comes to MP4 players. Starting out with a third generation Arcos AV420 in 2003 and ending up this year with a sixth gen Arcos 605. In between, I've had two different Arcos players, a Creative and an iPod, so I know what's out there. The three top contenders in the MP4 market and MP4 uh, being video, largely, are Arcos with its extensive range of players, Creative with its Zen Vision range, and now Apple with video support across all the new iPods, and of course, the iPhone. The main difference between these three manufacturers is quite distinct. Apple is way ahead in the design aspect compared to the other two. Creative is a better option for those tight on a tight budget, and Arcos has been the, always been on the forefront of the MP4 player market since they ever came into existence, and I would agree with them all the way through. Um, the thing, well, I've kind of got something, creative really upset me. First, they can't design software to save their lives. Uh, decent hardware, horrible software. And I ended up meeting one of their PR agents and he was an absolute jerk to me. So you're not really gonna find me recommending creative all that much. Sorry, creative, you need to train your PR people better. Uh, anyway, so according to James, these are the top five steps in choosing the right player for you. <clears throat> Number one, what do you need it for? If you want your MP4 player for listening to music and taking your favorite video clips with you to watch when you have a minute, you'll probably be looking for something with a small screen player within two to eight gigabyte range in terms of storage capacity. Or if you're looking for a device to use on the train to watch that TV show you missed last night or on an airplane to watch a movie or two, you'll be looking for a larger screen player so you won't strain your eyes with between 10 and 120 gigabytes of storage. Very important. Step number two, choose your brand. I'm sure I'm not the first to notice this, but whenever Apple comes out with a new iPod, Creative will come out with something a month or so later that does just about the same thing. Looks a lot uglier, but costs a lot less too. And that's James's words, not mine. So if you're a big Apple fan with no budget, uh, you might want to go for the iPod, um, you know, because you're an Apple fan. But if you're not bothered either way, save some money and take the Creative. Alternatively, if you're just going to use it to watch videos, get an Arcos. Step number three, choose your model. With each different model, you get a different screen size. If you'd rather have a small player, you'll be looking at the new iPod Nano with its sleek design and versatile storage options, the new Creative Zen MP4 player with between four and 16 gigabytes of storage, 
or the new Arcos 105. If you prefer a larger player, you'll be looking at an iP Apple iPod Classic, iPod Touch, or the iPhone, or the Creative Zen Vision M or W, or the Arcos 406, 506, or 706. Step number four, protection. As with all small consumer electronic products, you'd be a fool not to buy a case. The Arcos is the only device that comes with a half-decent case. The others just come with those pouches to keep away dust and scratches. Those are no good if you knock or drop the product, so invest in a hard-wearing case. It might also be worth looking into the extended warranties and accidental damage covered. These things aren't expensive, don't forget. You know, the cover compared to the actual unit. And this is a tip that's been echoed by you know James as, as well as other people, including myself. Step number five, get the most out of your product. Now that you know what you want, look into the extra features and see how they'll benefit you. You'd be surprised what features are on these devices. Wi-Fi and internet browsers, card readers, AV input-output ports, docking stations, TV recording features. There's a lot more than meets the eye to these players, and most people don't even realize it. In fact, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but if not, just for clarification's sake, I purchased my PSP not because of its game-playing abilities, but because of its media playback. Uh, I wanted to watch movies on longer plane trips, and that's what I do with my PSP. I, I play the games, the, the UMD games, and sometimes I get online. I just downloaded the latest firmware update so I can get Skype working on the PSP with an internet connection. I haven't really tried it because I don't have a compatible headset yet. Um, but to me, the killer app for the PSP was movie playback, not on UMDs. Uh, I can actually take a movie or take a TV show, re-encode it in MP4, the, that file format, so it'll play back on the PSP or, or the iPod, depending on the, the way I encode it. And then I just use that the PSP screen as a, a portable media player. And just that it has all these games that you could buy for it and all the other options with it, to me, is a bonus. Uh, you know, I can upgrade my memory stick at any time. Uh, I've been fine. I've, I've been able to squeeze not necessarily the highest quality movies, but certainly good enough for me. Um, probably about eight to ten movies on a four gig stick. Uh, you know, I don't always encode at the highest quality just because, you know, I'm like, well, I just want to watch the video. I don't necessarily want to watch the video in high quality because I'd rather wa be able to watch more videos at a lower quality rather than less videos at a higher quality. Because if I'm on a plane trip and, like, oh, I just. I ran out of movies and I've got you know two hours left in the plane ride. What am I going to do? Well, I could play a game, but uh, oh, no big deal. So, you know, the the PSP is another good portable media player device. Probably not going to have as much storage or options uh, likely as these other dedicated media playing devices. But I've always seen the PSP as a killer portable media device, no doubt about it. And gaming just I think is a bonus. Whereas I know most of you out there probably say no, it's all about the games. Uh, I'd agree. Um, and I'm just as happy having my media player also be my phone, that being the iPhone. I'd rather carry around less objects, not more. So again, it just depends on you know what you need, what you're looking for, the options that you're looking for in the field um, of, of media players, and, and what you're going to get out of it. You know, uh, don't buy more than you need, really. You know, it depends on what kind of media consumer you are. If you've got a lot of CDs at home and you want to have them with you wherever you go, I think you're crazy, but then you'd want to go with a device that handles or has a higher capacity or allows you to swap out uh, media sticks, or I'm sorry, like removable media. Um, the, uh, 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 I was thinking memory stick. I've got Sony on the brain now. Uh, but conversely, if you're someone who's like me, who likes to listen to music just kind of randomly, like sometimes I want to listen to The Doors, sometimes I want to listen to They Might Be Giants, I would rather purchase a music subscription ultimately wishing I could synchronize that with a media device unfortunately my portable media device is an iPhone right now uh, and I currently have an urge slash now Rhapsody subscription I roll my eyes every time I say Rhapsody um, but that suits me I'd rather pay a music subscription fee to get access to a gigantic library rather than paying a la carte per album or per track Everybody's different, you know. You gotta don't listen to your friend. Just take what we say as guidelines, general guidelines to making a purchase that's going to make you happy, because that's ultimately what it's all about at the end of the day. And getting back full circle with software and hardware, if there's uh, poor software, doesn't matter how good the hardware is, it's not going to be great. And that's the thing that holds back the PSP. It's the thing that holds back all of the creative devices. Um, I'm not so sure about Arcos. 
uh, although I've heard great things about Arcos in the past. Uh, some people would say Zune has been good, although that seems to kind of still be in the crawling stages of evolution. Uh, it, it'll get there eventually. Uh, I happen to hate iTunes. So even though it's worked seamlessly with the iPod, uh, I, I just I hate, hate iTunes. I just don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm, I'm, I'm fine with not liking iTunes. You don't have to try to convince me otherwise. No matter if anybody else has any other tips related to uh, picking up uh, media players, multimedia players for MP3s or MP4s, uh, feel free to drop me a line. My email address is chris at perillo.com, and you're also welcome to swing by our chat room with a live video feed, which James apparently recently stumbled into and very happy to, to make his virtual acquaintance. He's, well, he emailed at least from a UK address, so he's... He's halfway around the world right now, at least from where I am here in the Seattle area. No matter, uh, we are open 24 hours a day, typically talking tech, sometimes hardware advice, sometimes software help, asking questions, answering questions. We're streaming this video out live over the internet all the time, even on holidays, at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.